Where does Bitcoin get its value from? The answer is it gets it from you and me. There is no government or individual that places an artificial value on it. Bitcoin's value is as organic as it gets. Because of this, it has the potential to be a life raft for many people's diminishing purchasing power problem. Regardless of how you feel about Putin, Putin, feel about Putin, or Zelensky, imagine being a Russian or Ukraine citizen. You probably didn't ask for this war. Launched from the ground and from the air, pounding Ukrainian positions in the eastern Donbass region. You probably didn't have a say on what happens next, but because a handful of people decided to fight, your country got sanctioned hard or worse, literally leveled. Remember, there is always someone, another human, just like you, on their side of that border. The other you is now suffering in ways hopefully you never have to experience. Seen overnight just how much these new sanctions are affecting the average Russian household. The ruble absolutely crashed just in trading today. That means the value that Russians have for their money has diminished. So they have less spending power. Inflation is going up. And in response, the central bank hiked interest rates more than double. That means borrowing gets more expensive. The effects of this from a money standpoint is this. Every piece of money they worked hard to make became worthless practically overnight. Now Bitcoin is not perfect because perfect does not exist, never has, never will. And if you want to be notified of when my disadvantages of Bitcoin video comes out, then make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Bitcoin is what we call a deflationary asset, not necessarily because of its price compared to the US dollar or any other fiat currency, meaning currency backed by the government, even though it has performed that way over the long term. It's deflationary because the rate of new supply being minted, or as it's said in the world of crypto, mined, decreases over time. If you've watched this video over here, you know that there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins. What you may not know is that the rate of supply decreases over time. I'll explain what I mean by that in just a few minutes. But first, let me say this, that not having Bitcoin is a bigger risk to your financial well-being than having it. Every day, we buy things that lose 100% of their value the minute we buy them. So unless you are all of a sudden some sort of crazy penny pincher that doesn't buy anything then you shouldn't worry so much about the value of your investments going up and down in the short term anyway. The second thing I want to say is that it takes time to really understand the concept of Bitcoin and why it's so valuable. So don't be frustrated if you don't understand everything. Ask me questions in the comments. I may set up a Patreon page soon, but I'm still working out the details. Listening to something once usually means it's gonna go in one ear and out the other. But I just want you to stop and think for a moment. You currently use a system, the banking system, that you don't really understand. Most people don't know 
what happens to their money once it gets deposited into their account. They think it just sits there waiting for them to come and withdraw it when they need it. But there is so much going on behind the scenes that if you only knew, well actually, Henry Ford said it best. He said, it is well enough that people of the nation do not understand our banking and monetary system. For if they did, I believe there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning. Okay, now let's take a look at how Bitcoin can be a peaceful revolution. Remember from the inflation versus you video, with every action, transaction, vote, click, you do, you are participating in the system. In essence, what you buy is what you support. Bitcoin is a deflationary asset, and this is how. Bitcoins are created every day by miners. Miners run computers that help validate and process transactions throughout the Bitcoin network. The reward they receive for processing and validating transactions are paid out in Bitcoin every block. When there are enough transactions to fill up a block, a reward is paid out and a new block begins. A new block is created roughly every 10 minutes. After every 210,000 blocks, which takes about every four years, the rewards are cut in half again. So far, we are close to mining 19 million Bitcoins out of the 21 million. It is estimated that the last Bitcoin will be mined in 2140, which will mean miners will only receive Bitcoin income from processing transactions on the blockchain as opposed to mining fees and collecting the transaction fees. We can discuss what this might mean for the price of Bitcoin in a future video, but for now, let's stick to the deflationary side of the story. The history of the deflationary cut in supply of Bitcoin is as follows. In 2009, the reward for each block produced was 50 Bitcoin. On November 28, 2012, the reward was slashed in half to 25 Bitcoin for each block produced. On July 9, 2016, the reward was cut in half again to 12.5 Bitcoin per block. Then the most recent reward was cut in half again on May 11, 2020, bringing the block reward to 6.25 Bitcoins. So why does the reward being cut in half historically result in the price of Bitcoin becoming more expensive when measured in US dollars? The answer is because there is less and less Bitcoins available to buy as we near the supply cap of 21 million. On top of that, the demand for Bitcoin continues to climb. The halving effect on Bitcoin's price is undeniable. And the answer lies in the fact that unlike other assets, the current supply and future supply is known, which brings with it certainty and predictability, unlike what happens now with dollars being created out of thin air. Not knowing how much or when more is going to be created has horrible side effects. Add that to humans who are sitting with their fingers on the control panel, who are biased and generally want to enrich themselves or the people they care about. And you can begin to quickly see the shortcomings of our current system. Subscribe to check out the next wealth video where I will compare real estate to Bitcoin in part three. For now, check out one of these videos down below. If you don't, let me tell you. <sighs> Putting you right where it hurts. You'll be all right, buddy. Just breathe.